Okay, so my name is Carlo uh, Kaz Borbuka. Uh, I am Head of Patient and Public Involvement and Equalities. And so I work for the NHS uh, Clinical Commissioning Group in South West London. So that is in charge of buying and planning health and care services uh, across six boroughs in South West London. Yes, yeah, so I'm from the UK, born and raised in London. My mother's people are from southeastern Nigeria, so the Igbo people. Community is important to me, so a lot of the work that I do for the NHS is about working with communities in pursuit of supporting their, their own health and care and making sure that our services are responsive and serve all our communities equally. Personally, I sit on a board of residents within my local estate, so we help to make decisions about how we spend service charge and benefit of the community. So that's a really uh, important role to me, just making sure that decisions we make are in trust and are to the you know, real uh, benefit of local uh, people in that, in that community. Within my professional life, I think some of the most important work I've been doing has been around persistent health inequalities. So health inequalities are essentially unjustifiable differences in the experience or outcomes of services and I've been looking at those in terms of mental health and working on well really privileged to work on a bit of uh, on a project to that's being led by people in the local community based on their feedback around services to try and make a change. Well I think that black culture is uh, there is no one black culture so I suppose to try and answer the question I could say the people, so the uh, the roadmen um, with the banter, uh, you know, with the making stuff on on TikTok and Insta, um, to you know Nigerian Twitter, uh, again with the banter, uh, again with the comedy, to the ways in which people are are the, the musicality, the the dance um, that's come from so many different parts of of Africa to the, the deep thinking uh, of, of people in African and Caribbean communities about the nature of their reality, what we face, how to make change. That's really informed my own, my own thinking about how I approach my work. Down to, I think from a very personal, personal experience with, with family, with a mother who, who came, uh, she was by herself for a lot of the time she was resilient, she fought for my education, she instilled a sense of pride, instilled a sense of entitlement even uh, to a good education, to a good life in me and has really been instrumental in shaping who I am now and I know that many, many parents within our African and Caribbean heritage communities are facing the same and instilling the same values within their children so there's a lot to be proud of. I grew up in Wandsworth, I started off in Battersea, then was in Tooting, Streatham area, and then finally in Balham. Uh, so I lived in Balham for a good, wow, 20, 20 years. Uh, so that's most, most of my adult life. And I've got loads of good memories. So Henry Prince Estate, I think earliest memories, the, the, the playgrounds. Um, <laughs> Uh, King George's Park as well, um, the big fields right between Southfield and the River Wandle and like playing on the banks of the River Wandle even though we weren't really supposed to, going down to the Arndale Shopping Centre now it's been changed to like the South Side, uh, I suppose for the better um, and yeah hanging out earliest days um, around, uh, around Battersea, so now I do uh, work with an organisation called the Wandsworth Community Empowerment Network that's based uh, in the Doddington, uh, Rollo and, and the Doddington Estates, um, a really great community down there. I've had such hospitality. Yeah, it's a, it's a great borough. It's a great borough. Balham now um, is, a, is a bustling, it feels like a market town. Uh, so much going on. Really, really always great to go down there and head to the butchers, head to the you know, spy shop, pick up some yam, pick up some plantain for Mumsy, head, head to her place. Black History Month means a lot of things. It means a lot of things. It's 
I think as I was alluding to earlier with, about my mother, I that's that's something I carry, and certainly every October, I do reflect, and I think that Black History Month is a time for reflection. I think a time, and I think perhaps it should mostly be a time of reflection. It is also, I think, an opportunity for people to celebrate the contribution and remember, in fact, that, that influence, global influence of people of African uh, heritage. Right from the first universities being based in Africa, where the Greek philosophers came and, 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 and really learnt some really important um, ideas that helped to shape uh, European thinking, what later became European thinking, to the influence of Mansa Musa, um, changing the price of gold wherever he went because he just had so much so much wealth. Right down to dancehall, to grime, to hip hop. Hip hop's a global phenomenon. It's there's so many different versions of it. And you can hear hip hop in Hungarian, you can hear hip hop in Japanese, you can hear hip hop in German, French, any language that exists you can hear hip hop or hip hop influenced music. From the dance styles that have that have hit the clubs to the extraordinary filmmaking um, and you know Nollywood being one of the most prolific producers of, of, of films outside of India uh, and uh, really shaping the way in which people consume uh, and media entertainment and now you're seeing a lot more for example Nigerian and African uh, films on Netflix so I think that there's just a lot to point to in terms of the what we should be really thinking about when we think about Black History Month. But really importantly, I think, in terms of remembrance, is how the story I've told is one that isn't very often told about the contribution. And we can also talk about, for example, the vast wealth that's generated through the enslavement of African peoples and the uh, appropriation of, of land and resources and how that has the the world we know it today would not be possible without that wealth so i think that when we look around at the building so i used to live in exeter exeter was a was a, is a city that in 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 many ways benefited from the the slave trade and you can see that in the grandeur of some of the buildings and the names of some of the streets so i do think it's also an opportunity to think about that as well and the shared I think most importantly shared history that we have the history of the UK is also in many ways the history of of African people of African heritage the history of people of African heritage is very very much in, in inextricable from the history of of the world and that's something that we should all have an opportunity not just in October but it's a great opportunity in October to do so uh, to really think about reflect and, and celebrate So some of the some of the people that I I meet are worried that 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 embracing of heritage will be they'll be thought of as a as sort of right wing, uh, you know, fascists, and I think that in that case, what work we all need to do is to unpick the the parts of embracing our heritage that are not necessarily about. Uh, oppression or, or about um, the the subjugation of, of others and that's that's a difficult thing to do and it's very sensitive work but it's an important work I think the other part of that is is perhaps thinking about the need for the question about how I help others to embrace their heritage and for me I wonder whether that is in some way premised on the idea that there is a need to do that 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 is something perhaps that people of African heritage don't always do and I think that, for me, that points to a, a stigma around having uh, an African, African-Caribbean heritage uh, identity. And so I think the question there is really, how might we tackle that? What are the reasons behind that stigma? And what work, therefore, we need to do? So for me, going back to one of my earlier answers, I think that it's really for any younger person I meet of African or African Caribbean heritage is to say that actually there is more than one story about people who look like us. 
that we can point to some of the most complex and earliest kingdoms that ever and civilizations that ever existed on this planet. We can point back to the amazing innovations and resilience and survival of people who resisted continuously their enslavement. We can point to the outsized influence of cultural ways of meaning, dance, music, spoken word, you know, that versatility and, and vocabulary uh, and, and comedy of mediums for, of art like hip hop and their influence on the way that we all speak. I think that we can also look around us. I was talking earlier about the Victorian houses and the beauty of understanding who lived in them, how they lived in them. And I think that understanding the contributions that people of African uh, and African Caribbean heritage have made to the grandeur that we see around us when we're walking through some of the most beautiful cities in the UK is, is something that we can certainly point to and, and the fact that we are still here and, and we are in, in our ordinary lives carrying black history, black achievements with us, whether we're CEOs or school students, you know, it's, it's, that's, that's where we are.